Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. What were you doing 12 years ago today? Quarter past six this morning, that was me. Looking at the front of another car, said goodbye to my wife and kids, travel to work on the same road that I do every day, unknown to another person, overtook three cars and double white lines around a corner and ran head on into me. After being stabilised in Gladstone, took me to Rockhampton, let the pressure off my brain as it um, swelled to the size of a basketball, then flew me to Brisbane, put me on an induced coma and life support, 13 days, and took me another one month before I spoke my first word. So this would be the 12th year of my anniversary and for the change of the rest of my life. As I said, I was born and bred in Mandaba, where I went to school, ended up working on a few different orchards as an irrigator. And then we had a drought, so it is no water, no irrigation, no job. I then moved to Gladstone, where I lived with my uncle and aunt, who owned a big furniture store where I was applying, um, trying to get different jobs while I was there. Ended up with one at the Boyne Smelters. Met a girl, got married, and two children. One boy, Travis, and one girl, Brianna, who was born on the 11th of the 11th at 10 past 11, and lives at number 11, <laughs> which would happen to be my favorite number now. And we bought a house in Calliope, where I um, joined the Auxiliary Fire Brigade and also became the president of the Calliope Kindergarten. I was also in the um, Smelter Rescue Squad, where we did four days on, four days off, 12 hour shifts, two days, two nights. And on the four days off, I'd either be playing golf or fishing, as I was an A grade golfer. Loved it. And that, after all that, that changed me for the rest of my life so far. When they turned my life support off after the first 13 days, they, four doctors said I would never survive. I should be in a box after the, spleen, after the injuries I received. Lost my spleen, broke four ribs, tore, tore my aorta, and three brain bleeds. The day I woke up, after the doctor had sent my parents and wife and kids away from the hospital, as they'd been there every day, beside my bed. You now they went out shopping in Brisbane, on the other side of Brisbane, and they received a phone call. I remember them walking in the, the hospital, my wife looking at me and she said, you'll do anything to shop, stop me shopping, won't you? Through the road, recovery began. PA hospital, head injury unit. They had to teach me how to walk and talk. All, all again, treat me like a baby, basically. The nurses there should be paid more than what they have. Because as they can, as you can see, I I am walking, I am talking a lot better than I was 12 years ago. I used to have a black line down the room with the two rails the other side to stop me from falling over. And every day they'd time me, see how fast I could walk it. I want to fall flat in my face and, put it, and make the nurse disappoint for the nurses, for them badly doing their job made me scared and frustrated. Might have taken nine months for I walked out of that hospital. I did not want to be wheeled out. The challenges of coming home. I developed epilepsy with the hit in the head. I was unable to return back to work, which I used to drive cranes, unloading and loading ships. Uh, they wouldn't re-employ me.
Work paid me out and I was out of a job. After the payout I received, I had enough money that I'd never have to work again. It doesn't matter how much money you have in the bank, you cannot buy your old life back. Because of my injury, I was left walking on the outside of my left foot and 80 percent use, um, lost the 80 percent usage of my left arm. So many little things. Everybody do. Run. Try and tie your shoes up using one arm, one hand, and see how good you are. Just little things in life everyone takes for granted. Struggling to look after me, so she sent me to a respite home at Sandgate. No conversation. It was all pre-organised. She loaded all my car stuff into the car. Asked her why and where was I going. She told me I was too hard to look after. They sent me to someone who was able to. I spent nine months at a home in Sandgate. Sandgate Prison. A halfway home for all the drug guys who were left from, released from hospital on a certain day would all come and stay. And other people off the street who had nowhere to go would come and spend nights and days there for a couple of days. Unable to go home and visit my children because my wife had said I was incapable, incapable due to the injury I received from my head injury. How much is getting a, a train from Brisbane to Gladstone? Couldn't even go and see my own kids for their birthdays. One night out of the due from lack of sleep, pure frustration, I borrowed some one of the gentlemen in the room next, next to me to help me sleep. That nearly helped me sleep permanently. When I opened my eyes, I was lying in the bed of the Gold Coast Hospital with a drip hanging out of my arm and father standing beside me wanting to know why and how I end up in this hospital since I'd been in so many already. I felt so foolish. I was just trying to get acknowledged about wanting to go back. It nearly resulted in me losing my life again. We left the hospital and went back to the respite centre, collect, collected all my belongings, loaded them into the car and returned back to not back to Gladstone, not back to the home I had purposely built for my injuries, not back to my own children. Now I'm back where I know, where everybody knows me and I know everybody. I used to be able to talk to a brick wall and get a conversation out of it. But now when I talk to someone, it feels like I'm not really talking to them. It feels like I am talking to a brick wall. How they respond to me. You can tell by their feelings towards me. It really shows me how they feel of me, about me. They either think of me as a person or some able person. Well, it's up to you whether you think of me as disabled or not. Well, as far as I do, I'm not. The difference between the people you meet and the people who are your real mates. Mates are not, they do not expect things. They treat you for who you are, not what they expect you to be. I developed relationships with people that I had not been friends with since before the accident, who are now considered good mates. I still play golf using one arm, join the darts club. I'm thinking about joining a lawn bowls club used to be involved in a lot of sports, as I still am, and I want to be more. Living on a, in a unit by myself, one bedroom unit, and able to do most things for myself. This is not the end of my story. I have a dream of owning my own business, and run up my own video, video shop, not to make money, but to because I love movies, it'd be good for something for, to wake up and look forward to every day, as the town also needs it. There's 
seen something to do. I've seen the video shop here has shut. I've started the process of looking into the receiving, trying to receive my lot, car license back that has been taken off me due to the from the head injury. And also looking into the plan of getting my own so I can have somewhere for my mates to come around and play cards, families to come over for a barbecue, and also a place for my kids to come and stay. As is, I've only got a one bedroom unit, so they, they can't come. Because I have got epilepsy, which they won't, by law, they won't let them. So this is what I want to leave you with. It's all up here. I've even had a piece of a person with half a brain can realise it's up to you if you want to determine enough you can achieve anything. I am still determined and want to achieve my dreams and still trying very much. <laughs> <laughs>